Um, and so that evolution now gets you more, for example, deeper into your faith because you realize if government messes you up, you've got to find something that is that you know for a fact that will be stable. And, and for me, it's, it's my faith. It's the God that I serve that, is, that I know for sure. That if the government fix, messes me up, mm. this one I know for sure is is a constant. So it causes you to to be deep, and I think that's what happens with the evolution. You know, uh, things change. You, you have children who are babies, and then they become men, and the things that they need and their desires and aspirations are different from where, what it was before. And then you now have to become a parent of an adult, and one adult, and then two adults, and then the needs that they, the kids have change. That's where growth happens, and that's that evolution that you begin to see again. So I guess we should all know that life is really about growth, and that will always continue to evolve, and we should embrace the evolution that comes with it. But how do you how do you sort of you know navigate between the hats though? Because you, you're taking one hat off, or you yes. you wearing three hats at the same time? No, I'm still the same person, <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's just I think it's the same person, but just finding expressions. Um, I, I think the reason why sometimes people will find it difficult and think about hats, it's simply because who they are here is not who they are here there. Mm. So I'm the same. I'm still the same woman who's passionate and, and loves life and, and loves plants and loves nature. And, and I'm very in touch with my sensibilities. If I'm sitting with you, I, I pay attention. I can see what you're, I almost can see your mind, right? Because I'm, I'm present, right? It's the same way I'm fascinated by you. I'm fascinated by David. I'm fascinated by Eukarya. Mm. And so I'm intrigued and I'm interested in people. That same person is the same person who operates in a place of faith where yet again, I'm intrigued by God and all the things that make God who he is. And I'm, I'm I'm willing to explore. I want to grow with the, in that relationship the same way I applied with my children, that each child is different, each child is unique, they all have their different strengths and their weaknesses and the things that make them special in my, in my space and what they bring to my family. And I'm fascinated by them. So I want to spend time with my son who's in Boston because I know that we can explore the U.S. together and I know that his perspective on life is so unique and different and I can't wait for us to travel, right? But the same way I want to spend time with my little one Right, who's at home and who's very talkative and, and very in touch with his with his uh, empathy side and you know loves the country is very patriotic is loves football and is a Liverpool fan and I see all of them and I just want to explore it's the same way I want to explore my husband and the same way I want to explore my business yeah, that's really really fascinating so where that that enthusiasm and that and that um, sense of you know, I need to be present. Mm -hmm. Where do you think that was birthed from? Um, I th I think it's it's um, it's part of my composition. Um, as a child, I I sat and if I wanted to drink a bottle of a soft drink, I would read the label. I would read. Interesting. Yes, and and I remember what logos look like as I pay attention. And, and I have two children who are exactly like that. When they were little, when you drive them, they don't fall asleep in the car. They look through the, the window. And they're always telling you something that happened that they saw last week, two weeks ago. Oh, mom, when we were driving down this road, I'm like, how do you know what happened? People live here. No, people don't live there. People live there. I saw a man taking his bath two weeks ago because, oh because they, you know, they're quite present. So I think it's part of my nature, but it's also the thing that I that is required for me to work in my gifts, right? And being present and, and empathy is part of the things I operate in if I so I'm, I'm act, and I'm an activator. Um, de developmental means I need to know the areas where people need development and, and to be able to bring that to the table. The only way to do so is if you're, if you're present, if you're paying attention, and if you care for people. Talking about caring, um, the, the space in, in manufacturing in, in Nigeria right mm -hmm. now, I think you know, generally across Africa, but specifically Nigeria, you, know, you, start, you started a brand. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm guessing that when you started very much like people like me, there's a lot of discoveries that you made along the way. Um, majority of those discoveries are usually things that are not going to work, mm -hmm. right? You, know, you stumble across you know, the, let's say, the, the lack of mm -hmm. this or the lack of that. When you wanted to start your business and then you, you, know, you talked about, you know, you talked about, you know, you were doing makeup and then for makeup, you were thinking about the actual product itself. When you went searching, I know very much of the story, you yeah. went searching for your makeup mm -hmm. and you made a lot of discoveries and there was a lot of setbacks. Um, how did you sort of 
process the discovery that Nigeria wasn't going to necessarily give you um, that manufacturing opportunity um, that perhaps you might, like many of us, um, when we start out, um, assume we might have. Because I had a conversation with you and, and I was a little bit shocked that you, you, you made me realize that we can't actually, we don't actually manufacture um Color cosmetics. Color cosmetics in Nigeria. Yeah. Now, I know there's a lot of, you know, issues as to why, but it never occurred to me that something so simple in my mind um, would be something that we've not even explored, especially something that is such in high demand. Mm. I, with all the all and bear parties that we attend, mm -hmm. why are we not manufacturing makeup mm -hmm. in Nigeria? And what are the ways that the industry itself needs to start thinking about exploring the opportunities that it provides mm -hmm. that it's currently not exploring. Mm -hmm. So first of all, um, it'll be great for us to be able to do that, but there there's infrastructure limitations and the infrastructure limitations cut across um, power, for example, right? Uh, when you build a factory, you need to be 100% certain that the production that you're going to be churning out every day because those that factory needs to be functioning. The number of products that need to be churned out on a daily basis, you also have the capacity to transport them from one location to the other. Um, and so if you think about transporting across Nigeria, uh, you know, at a time where we felt that there were things that were being fixed, so we we then had, uh, you know, more airports, and which, which meant that if you had more airports, you had more... Uh, Airlines, it means you could air freight your, your goods from one location to the other. There was a time where uh, we saw the growth in the aviation industry, and, and it, those were signs, right? Uh, we saw advancement in, in, um, in, in, in local transportation as well, right? Um, and we saw more brands that were being built, and we saw advancement. But many of those things have also shrunk. So we lost many of those airlines today, right, um, that existed at a time where we were seeing growth. And which means that um, if you have fewer number of airlines, then the cost of transporting these things from place to place becomes even more expensive. Um, so the question for you is, where do I have control over the cost that I'm create when I'm creating this product? Uh, if I build a factory, then these costs are going to be very high. But then I have to think about how do I distribute it such a way that it's everywhere vis-a-vis -vis the cost of producing here locally. Um, the question then is, you know, why don't you outsource that manufacturing to someone who's serving 100 to 200 customers across the world who doesn't need his factory to produce for you every single day because he's, he's spread his cost across multiple customers, right? So if I manufacture a manufacturing tire product, is Tara in the quantities I want to manufacture is it sufficient to keep that factory running? And if that's not enough, do we have sufficient number of other brands? So to, to, to now, this is I've been in business for over 20 years, and we only have uh, maybe in the last three years uh, seen a significant growth in the number of local brands. And they can be more than Ten. In in terms of you know, uh, cosmetics, cosmetics, color cosmetics, lipstick foundations mm -hmm. that can be found in for local consumption, not just for local consumption, being created by locals, okay. right? So I'm a makeup artist. I built a brand. I understand what customers need. I create a line of product. If I build a factory, then I need to service. I need to be able to service all those people, for for it to make economic sense, right? And we still do not have that advancement, as opposed to in a country like Germany, UK, US, or China, where there are multiple brands, and many of these brands have been around for many, 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 many years. They're mature brands. They, they're constantly innovating. So if I built a factory, then I can serve them. But unfortunately, we also don't have transportation across the continent. 